Hi, my name is Kevin McDonald, and I'm declaring my independence. Independence from what? Why, negative thoughts and energy, of course. Chief among them, hate, division, and fear. You see, I know that we're all one, and together we can solve any problem, save our planet and each other. Please, join me as we come together as one and choose a better way to be. So now, let's begin with my independence report. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of My Independence Report. My name is Kevin McDonald, and I mean to tell you, we've got a great person on the line with us today. Uh, we're, we're in uh, uh, negotiations to see if we can figure out how to do this on a regular basis, because I'm telling you, uh, if you are contemplating, if you've already, already, if you've gone to this podcast, you've seen who our guest is going to be, and her name is uh, Stacy Chil- Chil- Chalemi, sorry, <laughs> Stacy Chalemi, and she is the author of over 20 books. She is a nationally known speaker. She's been on actual television. She's been on The Oz Show several times. She's a wonderful gal. She's got a wonderful life story that you would think being an author and a speaker and on TV and and really bright that she would uh, have like this flawless existence and everything that was roses coming up. Well, that just wasn't the case in 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 her case. So, we're going to talk to Stacy right now. Stacy, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I mean to tell you, you are an extraordinary young lady, and, and we I ran into you on one of these uh, uh, sites where people get together and find out about each other, and uh, and I can learn about you and, and what you do, and I've been wanting so badly to find someone who is an expert in natural healing, somebody that can help people live their lives without the chemicals as much, without other things, and you're that person because you've written, like I said, 20 books, one of which is called, tell us your your premier uh, book that you've written. My premier book was The uh, the Complete Herbal Guide. I based that, um, I did about five or six years of um, actual um research and uh, I learned about all different types of different um, alternative ways and different herbals that can actually help heal the body, help heal conditions, to help people both mentally and physically. And after five or six years of uh, research, I put together the Complete Herbal Guide. Um, the book did very well. People were very interested in learning about how to heal the body naturally. It basically informs people about all the different types of herbs and different ways of healing yourself naturally. So people don't always have to rely on a medication because sometimes, as you know, when you, ha- you take medication, you can go to the doctor and tell them an ailment and they give you medication for it. Then all of a sudden you take that medication and that medication gives you a symptom. And then you don't realize it's from the medication you're taking. And then you go back to the doctor and say, you know, I still don't feel good. I have this now, you know, and the doctor gives you another medication. Before you know it, you have a whole pharmacy in your uh, bathroom. And sometimes it's, it's good to look at yourself and try to figure out what is the root cause? Why am I feeling like this? What's causing it? And what can I do about it? naturally that can actually help heal my body make me stronger make me think more clearly and more focused and actually get myself to the next level of feeling better that's a that's awesome and that's and that's why you're here because you're going to help myself you're going to help our audience do a, a bunch of to live life a little bit easier and a little bit more authentically but let's talk about you first of all something happened you you were brought up as a uh, um in a, in a in a good family and had everything going well and then something happened when you were five. Tell us about yes. that. Well, at five years old, um, I was sleeping one night. I started all out actually, believe it or not, with an ear infection. I had an ear infection and then I just developed a common cold. And then one night um, I was sleeping and my mother heard some gurgling from the other room and she came in and she saw me in a grand mal seizure. My lips were turning blue and I, my entire body was shaking and I was drooling from the mouth and my eyes were rolled, rolled back and she almost she almost fell to the floor herself and she had called the, um, the ambulance. They took me to the hospital and um, 
I was induced into a four day coma. Uh, they, uh, they didn't, you know, they didn't know exactly what was happening, but it was more than the common cold and it was more than an ear infection. And, uh, after that grand mal seizure, I, I wasn't doing too good medically. So I was in a coma for four days. And as I was in a coma, they told my parents that I had encephalitis that had traveled through the brain and they weren't sure exactly what was going to happen. They said, when we take her out of, out of there, um, when she if she comes out of the coma, um, we believe that she's probably going to be paraplegic, or she's going to have um, she's going to have brain damage. And my parents uh, were devastated. And I remember my dad telling me the story that one day he was by the my bedside, and he he was he, my father's from Greece, and he was brought up in Greece and in the islands of Greece. They're very religious, and he used to go to a church with his family all the time. And there was a ac- actual statue. Um, They had water running down the statue all the time, and it looked like the statue was actually crying. And he was praying to that statue, and he was praying, you know, that I would be uh, healed and that I would come out of this okay. And when he, he looked up at me, he saw a tear roll down my eye, and he was in shock, and I woke up. And the first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. And uh... <laughs> Every five-year-old, that's what they want. That's what they want. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have uh, severe brain damage. I didn't, I wasn't paraplegic, but I did end up with ep- epilepsy. And to this day, they cannot find the scar tissue damage in my brain that causes the epilepsy. But they do believe that the epilepsy is, um, the scar tissue is scattered throughout my entire brain because I could take all different types of seizures. So, you know, I struggled all my life. I, you know, it was like a roller coaster ride. You know, um, they put me on phenobarbital back then because there were only two drugs that were available. And, um, you know, then uh, I was uh, controlled for a while. And then I came, as you went through menstruation um, and ovulation as a young woman, um, your hormones changed and my seizures started again. And, uh, you know, I consistently took seizures. It was very hard for me to uh, get, become controlled. They were trying to find the right medication, but, you know, it worked a little bit, but it didn't work 100%. And uh, when I got uh, older and I got to college, I, wa- I had goals for myself. I always wanted to obtain as much as I can. And when I got to the, my goal, I always wanted to try to retire. And when I was in college, I my seizures, um, the late night study and the stress and all the other stuff that comes with college um, was causing more and more seizures. And I just didn't know if I could do it. I was struggling. I was devastated. I, I wanted to reach my goals in life, but I just wasn't sure if I could actually do it. And I remember writing to the Epilepsy Foundation. Uh, they have a magazine and I asked them to publish my article and I asked people, if you have epilepsy, how do you get through it? Let me know your story and let me know how you get through this in life. Um, because I just don't know if I can get through it. I just don't know how I'm going to be able to reach my goals in life when I'm consistently having seizures. And I, uh, surprisingly, I received three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada from people telling me their stories and telling me about themselves and how they get through it. And I was shocked. It, it gave me such inspiration and hope. And I, I was, you know, I thought to myself, if these people can do it, so can I, you know, and I had to learn through, you know, my course of my lifetime that, you know, you really need to love yourself, accept yourself for who you are. And once you learn to accept yourself and you realize um, that, you know, this is who I am and this is, I, you know, and I just have to learn how to cope with my life because no one in life is perfect. And we, you know, we all, we all have something, everybody has a something in their life. So we just have to learn how to move on and move forward. And, and that's what I did. And I, you know, I started working in the city. I worked for a big corporation. I was doing really well for a long time. And then one day a producer saw me have a seizure on the floor. And uh, 30 minutes later, I was released from my job. And it was devastating, but I didn't let it get to me. I just moved on. I was getting ready to get married, and I was just uh, – so I started to um, do my own business. I started to do freelance writing, and I started to actually – I in college, I had um, asked the people who wrote to me that, uh, to give me their stories, and I asked them if I could publish a book one day because they gave me such inspiration and hope. They turn, turned my life around, and I wanted to be able to put a book together and show other people how to turn their life around who had this disorder. 
So when I actually started my own freelance business, I, you know, I started the book in college and I actually finished it. And it was my first book was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And, you know, so many people were inspired by that book. I was shocked. I, you know, and I remember one day I opened up my email and a person wrote to me and they said, you saved my life. They said I was on the verge of suicide and I read your book. I went into Barnes and Nobles. I picked up your book and your regiments and your, your stories helped me learn that I could get through it. And I used all those regiments and all those techniques and tools you put in that book. And it gave me a hope and a will to live. And then kind of like the light bulb went out, you you know, I was like, wow, I never knew words could be so powerful. I never knew people could actually, you know, be so inspired by someone else's, you know, words. And that's when really the light bulb went on. And I realized, you know, I wasn't really meant to be a corporate girl in the city. I was meant to help people, you know, because I was so inspired that I could help one person's life. I said to myself, imagine if I could help millions of people. Imagine if I could do what I did for that one person, just like those letters did for me. And then, you know, everybody has something. And I actually started writing for an herbalist. And, you know, um, I was still taking seizures. And I was, you know, and I started writing for this herbalist. And I started doing research of my own. And I started learning so much. And I I started applying a lot of the stuff I was learning to my own life. My seizures went from 9 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 2. And my seizures became controlled. And I, I realized, you know, yes, I take medication. But you can't just rely on medication. You need to create a healthy lifestyle, a lifestyle that's going to improve your life, a lifestyle that can actually be healthy for your body and actually help heal you. And, you know, by creating the lifestyle that you need for your body, what your body needs, if you learn and understand your body and you understand the needs and the things that your body is asking for, you can change your health. And I realized this. And that's when I started researching, and that's when I did all that research, and I put all put together the complete herbal guide. Then I started a little blog on Blogger. I don't know if you remember Blogger, but that was like a little blog that Google made out in the beginning. Sure. Um, back in the late 90s, and I started out that blog, and it started out with 400 people. Then it went, I started getting 10,000 people, then I created a real website, and then the real website grew to over 100,000, 200,000, and kept growing. People were interested. People wanted to learn, how could I make myself feel better? What can I do? Because you know what? When you're feeling a certain way, where do you go? Where do you start? You know, you don't know. You know, you, you don't you don't really real know what the answer is. So I want to try to create some type of guidance, some something to help people open their eyes, educate them, make them understand things. Because a lot of times when you read stuff and it's, it's written by doctors, as much as their intent is good, their vocabulary and their terminology is so advanced that people don't understand exactly what they're trying to get across even though it's valuable information. So to have a website that people could actually understand, it's easy to understand, it gives suggestions and advice, and it teaches people how to heal themselves, how to make themselves healthy, how to live a healthy life, both mentally and physically. Because you have to feel good mentally and you have to feel good physically. And if your mental state isn't good, your physical state's not going to be good. And if your physical state's not good, then your mental state's not going to be good. So it goes together. And that's what I try to do. I try to help people feel better. And hopefully, you know, if I can improve, you know, a couple of people's lives, I'm happy. Well, a couple things. First of all, um, that website that you just referenced, if somebody wants to go there, how do they get there? (laughs) It's called the completeherbalguide.com. And uh, the website has a bunch of great things on it. It talks about all different types of conditions. It talks about fitness. It talks about uh, different ways and different recipes to help um, make your body feel better and heal your body. And it talks about weight loss. Uh, we try to hit every um, topic under the under the health belt as, as we can. We have pe- lots of people with uh, good experience writing and creating articles um, that have health experience. Um, and we post, you know, articles from experts and we try to, you know, we try to educate people the best we can and give this, you know, as best knowledge as we can. Um, so that website is called the complete herbal Very good. And you can also go to Stacy Chalemi 
dot com and you can find your way there to get to the other place uh yeah. so, mm-hmm. so, and it's it's really it's really cool because you've you've written a bunch of books and including ones about uh, drinking pure water and what's it like to live with ep- epilepsy and and uh even even beginner tips for horse trading <laughs> i'm not sure where that comes from <laughs> But uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> and you and you've worked with uh, um, uh, Jack Canfield with uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul or for the Shopper's Soul, which I, I have no earthly idea what that would be about. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. But I wanted to ask you first of all, um, you were a beautiful five-year-old child. What must have gone through? I, I've had kids. What must have gone through your mother's mind? When she walked into that room and you looked like you were a child possessed, uh, your yeah. eyes were rolled back and, and you were turning blue. And I, that must have been the most horrific moment in time for her. It was. And it was very hard for my father, too. You know, I, I think, um, you know, it was it was well, you were daddy's little to- girl. I was daddy's little girl, yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, now that I'm a parent myself, I'm a parent of three children, you realize how hard it is at, from a parent's standpoint because you see your child suffer and you have no control. You know, when as a parent, you always want to help your child. You want to make them feel better. You want to be able to, you know, get them over the hump and you want to do it for them because you love them so much. But when your child is ill and your child has an illness or a condition, you have no control over the situation. You, the only thing you can do is try to comfort that child, make that child feel better, do research to try to see if you can get, you know, the help your child needs. But it's very hard for a parent to stand back and have to see their child suffer, and they can't make it go away. So, so they were really, I think they were de- devastated for, and to this day, they're very, de- you know, they're devastated. But my mother, I think, handles it a little bit better. You know, she's, you know, she gives her advice and she's, you know, she's always there and supportive. And so is my father, you know, but I think, like you said, daddy's a little girl. It's a little, it's always hard to see your child. Even at my age, it's still hard. You know, if, if something doesn't go that great and, you know, they, they see you, you know, suffering is, it's hard. Well, and, and to grow up the way you did with epilepsy, and for those of you that may not know somebody that has gone through that, I do, and so I, I have a good idea. There are things that you cannot do, one of which is drive, which every 16-year-old wants to be able to do, wants to have a, a great life, um, and to, to drive, to do other things like that, you just can't do it, and it really separates you from other people, doesn't it? It does. You know, um, when, when I was a young child, you know, they, you know, they would put me on the side and say, I couldn't play kickball because I had epilepsy. They were afraid the ball was going to hit my head. And, you know, the the lack of knowledge out there and the stigmatism for epilepsy, you know, um, was always, you know, was worse back then, but it's still there now. And, you know, I still work with a lot of different organizations and different companies who work to help heal people with different conditions and illnesses and epilepsy. And when people don't understand something, there's fear. And when people don't get it, um, you know, they don't know how to react. And uh, for someone with epilepsy, you know, it's very hard, you know, um, you know, every, you know, you in in the state in 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 um in the U.S. you know you, you can drive once you you are controlled, but if you're not controlled, you can't you are you can't drive. And you know for years, as they were trying to figure out what how to control me and and how to control my seizures, you know I I didn't drive for over 15 16 years, and and it was devastating. It was like being in prison in your own home. And for me, being an independent young woman, I always liked to do things myself. I hated to ask, have to ask somebody, even though I had a very supportive family. I hated to say, can you help me with this? Can you take me here? Can you do this for me? You know, it was devastating. It, it was heartbreaking. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, for the longest time, I had so much anger in, in, inside of me because I just not, was was very unhappy about having epilepsy. And I could not. I could not get it controlled. And, you know, you want to be like everybody else, but you don't feel like everybody else. It's an invisible um, condition, they call it. And, you know, I can, I can be next to somebody and I look just like that other person, but there's a life, uh, a certain lifestyle I have to lead and a certain lifestyle I have to live by. 
and I can't do sometimes a lot of the other things that people do. And, you know, and if you push yourself, you could have a seizure. So you have to be really smart and try to, you know, you have to live that lifestyle that you know is going to benefit you and, and help control your seizures. And it could be devastating for the person who has it and even for the caretaker. People don't give caretakers enough, enough of, um, you know, um, I guess, recommendation or, you know, to give them enough of credit. But, you know, it's hard for the people around you taking care of you because, you know, when you're falling on the ground and you're having a seizure, you know, it's very devastating for that person emotionally and, you know, physically because they need to make sure that you're okay. And it could be stressful for the other person too. And, you know, when you're asking people to take you places, sometimes you, you would feel like you're, you know, you're imposing on them because everybody has their own life too. So it was, it it was, uh, it was very hard in, 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 in many ways, both physically and mentally. I was taken aback and boy, was I angry when I was reading your profile and you (laughs) meant, you mentioned the fact that you were in a big, big to do place in Manhattan, or, or somewhere in New York, and you had a yeah. seizure, fell over, and one of the bosses walked over you, and yeah. 30 minutes later, you were discharged. I know a bunch of lawyers that would like to have your name. <laughs> well, you know what? It was so long ago, and I said to myself after it happened, I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this get to, get to me. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to make a big deal. And back then, too, you have to realize that was the uh, the late 90s and, and you know, um, job discrimination and, and all that other stuff was not such a big deal back then. It was, it was treated differently. You know, um, things were more hush-hush and things weren't in the open as much as they are now. But, you know, I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the lawyers. And I didn't think about suing. I didn't think about anything. I didn't. I just wanted to get over the hump and move on. I wanted to succeed. I wanted to be a better person. And I said, I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm not going to dwell on it. And I'm going to I'm going to move forward because there's something out there for me. And I'm going to find out what it is. And that's what I did. And, you know, and I actually I spoke with the Epilepsy Foundation and they actually they sent me to Washington to speak in front of Congress. And I spoke in front of Congress. And I educated those those um, congressmen about epilepsy, and and I educated them about job discrimination and what goes on. And you know, it was and I still remember the congressman in New Jersey. He was in the front row, and he took out his handkerchief and he was wiping the tears as I spoke. And afterwards, I went over to him, and he came, he shook my hand, and um, it was uh, back then. I think I believe it was Congressman Rush Holt, and he. He thanked me for, for my um, my speech and for what I said, and he said, you know, you brought back a lot of memories because my sister had epilepsy. And he said that I, you know, you, you, you made me, you know, think about a lot of things that, you know, I went through. And, you know, it just brought back a lot of emotions. And, uh, and he thanked me for what I was doing. And, and that meant a lot to me. And, you know, and it, it makes you think that, you know, it's a, it's a disorder that is very common. Many people have it and it's, it's out there. The millions and millions of people suffer from epilepsy or suffer from a seizure. And it, but it's just not, it's not publicized like cancer or diabetes or high blood pressure, you know, you don't hear about it as much and you should because lots of people suffer from it. And, um, you know, we really need to educate the people out there and let them know a little about it. And like I said earlier too, everybody has something, you know, and if it's not epilepsy, someone is suffering from something because nobody in this life is perfect. And we just have to learn how to love ourselves, accept ourselves, how to heal ourselves in a way that's going to make us strong enough to move on in life. And we just have to keep chugging. And that's what we got to do. I'm totally impressed with you, by the way, but I have to, (laughs) I have to ask you, what is it about you that is different than other people who will say, look at the hand that life has dealt me, how crappy it is, but I'm just going to fold up and, and into a little ball and just not pursue anything because it's hard. It's difficult to yeah. do what you've done. What is it about you that is different than other people that don't, you, you have not taken no for an answer and uh, bless yeah. your soul for that. Thank you. Well, you know what? I didn't realize it like when I started working with people with disorders, disabilities and, and different diseases and stuff, I, I said, Wow, when I when I spoke to people who suffer from cancer, they had more of a positive a- attitude. They were gonna beat it. They were positive, they were strong. 
But when I talked to a lot of people in the epileptic community, I saw a lot of negative thinking. I saw a lot of people who were frustrated, who were depressed, and were angry, and they just didn't know how to move forward. They didn't, and what I, I feel about myself that is unique is that I realized what gets me through every day is positive thinking. I cannot dwell on the negative. I said to myself, you know what? Everybody is here for a reason. And I believe myself personally, we all walk through a journey in life for a reason. You know, we're, you know, I believe there's something higher up there and we're being taught. This is like a boot camp for everybody. And whatever we learn in life, we have to apply it to our lives, strengthen our lives. And we're going to use it later on for a reason. And my epilepsy made me stronger. And what I had to go through is I had to, like I said, I had to accept myself. I have epilepsy. The past is the past. And the present is now. I'm never going to, the epilepsy is never going to go away. It's going to stay with me the rest of my life. So I can't dwell that I have it. I have to focus on now and say, okay, I have epilepsy. What can I do to move forward and live the life that I want to live? And, you know, and, you know, you have to kind of plan for the present and set yourself with short-term and long-term goals. But what really made me uh, move forward and actually get through it was the positive thinking. I took all that negative energy around me, all the people that were negative in my life that, because if you ever notice, if you talk to a person that's negative and you have a chat with them or a phone call or you're in their presence, after that conversation, you feel drained because their negative energy drains you. I want to be around positive people. I want to be around energetic people like myself. And I need people with a positive attitude to, to give me the energy I need, and I hope I can give them the positive energy they need. So we're strengthened together, and we can move forward, and we can we can conquer the world if we want to. And I just had to get rid of all that negative energy around me, and I had to think positively. And I said to myself, okay, I have this disorder, but like I said, everybody has something. And what can I do to help others? And like I said to you early in the conversation, when I started helping a few people, especially now when that one person said, you helped me from not committing suicide, I knew what my calling was in life. And I said, you know what? I have to go out there. My calling is, is not to be a, a, a millionaire and, and to, to drink martinis on a Friday night and to buy, you know, all these uh, designer handbags. My calling is to help people who have a disorder or an invisible disability or a person that has a condition. And I'm going to do whatever I can to help people because they were people, I didn't get like this all by myself. The Epilepsy Foundation, the people who worked in the Epilepsy Foundation, people who I met, you know, during my journey that said, you know what, you have these qualities, you have something. Even when I first started writing, you know, writing takes practice. You have, you know, it's not something that just comes to you. You have the ability, but you have to work at it and to make yourself better and better and better. And there was people out there that have made it in life and they said, you know what, you have the ability you have the, 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 you have what it takes to, you know, to write a book. You have what it takes to write articles that can change people's lives. And people taught me and made me better and show, you know, I got a lot of constructive criticism and you have to realize constructive criticism is, you know, some people take it very offensively, but I think it's a great thing because, you know, people who care about you only give it to you because they want to help you improve and make yourself better. And, you know, that's why you stay around people with positive energy, because the positive people are not doing it to harm you. The positive people are doing it because they want to help you. And there were met many people along my way that have helped me become who I am today. And they were the people who strengthened me and helped me and gave me insight. And, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them. So I want to be there for other people like people were for me. You know, a couple things. You're absolutely right when we talk about positive energy and negative energy. And if you ever walked into a room and, and it feels like something's off, it's because there's somebody that's got negative energy in the room that is actually pulling the energy out of other people. And they, they call yes. them energy vampires. And those yes. are people that you want to really stay away from because they're not good for you. And uh, no. there are ways, and uh, there are lots of lots of guys. There's uh, one. Uh, his name is John Edward. I don't know if you know who that is, 
but he is yes, he, I do. he is a psychic medium and he's been on the show and you, if you reference his uh podcast he talks a great deal about how to protect yourself from negative mm-hmm. energy because it's really important that you are that you're right that you surround yourself with positive people the people that are interested in making a difference in the world so that you can uh, join with their positive energy rather than get dragged down by somebody's negative energy. 100%. You know, I've seen my life turned around when I started focusing on the positive and I started being around positive people and I started creating a whole new life for myself. And it was all that positive energy that was kind of like the gas in my gas tank. And it just kept me going. I get up in the morning. I feel positive. I feel energetic. I want to do something that, you know, makes me feel better and makes me feel good. And that's going to help people. And, and when I wake up in the morning, I'm energetic to see who I can help today and who I can make better. And, you know, and it, it gives, it makes me feel good as a person. And, you know, positive energy is what makes everybody going. And like I said, the, the thing with a lot of people who have conditions and illnesses or are going through something in life that's pulling them down you know, depression can be, you know, can be like, uh, you know, a hole. And once you fall in it, it's very hard to get out. And you have to try to, you know, you have to try to get the help you need because, you know, to, to move yourself forward, you know, and it's that it's those positive people and the positive therapy and the positive, um, the, the positive uh, readings and, and, and things that you need will help you because that's what holds people back is that they are they have negative energy and they are being held back and they need to move forward and focus on the good things about themselves because everybody has something special. We all have great qualities, but not everybody feels they're good enough to believe in themselves and believe in those good qualities. They don't feel good enough about themselves. And that's what self-esteem plays, plays a big role also. You have to feel good about yourself, and there's ways to build your self-esteem. And once you start seeing the good qualities and you start focusing on those good qualities in yourself, you start building yourself up, and you start strengthening yourself, and you start feeling positive about yourself, and then you have the strength to overcome the other things in life that you're going through, and then you start just focusing on the positive, and then, like, in life, things come our way. But then you have the strength to focus on it, get through it, hurdle through the problems and then move forward. And there's always going to be a roller coaster. There's many times where I felt like I got knocked back. Every time I felt like I went two, two spaces forward, I felt like I got knocked back three, something happened. And it's like, you, you think, why me? Why me? But you know what? Everything happens for a reason, I believe. And we have to think, you know, and when we go through life, we have to fix the problem and then say, what did it, what did I learn from this? How did this, you know, you know, it, it, I, it was something that was, you know, that may have knocked me back a couple of steps, but what did I learn and how did it make me a stronger person? How did, how, you know, how can I better from what I learned and then use it for something good in life? You said something that, that, um, that I think a lot of people would be well served if they chose to do it. And that is you made a conscious choice, a conscious choice to live your life better, more authentically to find out what was going on with you and to move forward and to help people. That was, that was a conscious choice that you made. You could have sat there and stayed in your room watching, you know, TV and petting the cat instead of getting out there and doing all the things that you did. And that was because you chose to do that. It wasn't an accident. I I truly believe that everything that happens in our life happens to us for a reason. And that what happened to you is distasteful and as awful as it was coming out the other side it allowed you to have the platform to be able to really help people and that's just outstanding thank you you know i i really do believe we all have conscious choices you know and i just find that some people you know they tend to get stuck in the negative and they just, you know, they, you know, they focus on the, the worst possible things that could happen to them. And they put themselves in a, in a hole where they just, you know, they, they don't think highly of themselves and they can't move forward. And they have all this, they've created their own negative energy and then negative things start happening. Because when you, when you are negative, negative energy comes to you, I believe, you know, and I did make a conscious choice. I did not want to live life 
I did, I, I would, I, you know, once I learned to love who I was, I said to myself, you know what, I am not going to let this stop me. I refuse to let a condition stop me from reaching my goals in life. And if, if I wasn't meant to be that corporate girl in the city, there was a reason for it, you know, and, you know, that's maybe why I got epilepsy at the age of five, because they were directing me. And, you know, I, I always believe that we are washed over by the spirits and we have people up in the heavens watching over us. And I believe that my journey was not meant to be, you know, a big corporate girl. And I got put on, you know, with these obstacles in life and all these things happened to me so I could become a, a stronger person with a more compassionate soul. And I, you know, I look at life a very differently than lots of other people look at life. And I, I look at life and I see people, I see certain things in people that they don't see in themselves. And then sometimes, you know, it can be frustrating because you see things in people, they have such great qualities and they just don't believe in themselves. And it's just, you know, you have to, you know, person, you, you know, if so, someone doesn't want to be helped, you can, you can, they can only, you can't change them unless they want to change themselves, but you can show them the tools and you can try to show them all the great things about themselves. And, you know, hopefully, you know, that positive energy will come and they will, you know, inspire their, their own selves and move forward. But, you know, I, I truly believe we all have great things about ourselves and we need to really look inside ourselves, learn about ourselves and accept ourselves and really focus on those great things and put all those negative things, put them on a dove and let it fly away and just focus on the positive things in life because those positive things will lead you to a life that will be phenomenal if you let it. And I will tell you that I, before, I firmly believe what you're saying is true because that's how you and I made connections. It was a mm -hmm. totally random thing and it turned, but it's going to turn out to be a great thing for, for me because I'm going to learn a lot from you. And, uh, <laughs> and also with us working together, I think that we can help other people feel better about who they are. And even if it's just the emotional aspect of it and they can't deal with the physical aspect of it, um, you might be able to help, but you might be able to help with both. I don't know. We're going to find that out. You and I. Yes. And you know, it's so funny. You say something like that because you, you know, 90% of stress is, um, 90% of illness is caused by stress. Stress could be our worst enemies and they can cause illness. And, you know, so it's learning how to emotionally handle your problems and emotionally how to, how to decrease that stress in your life can actually help heal your body too. And people don't realize that, but it's true. Have you ever noticed when you're going through a stressful time in life, you start getting worn down, you start, you start, and you, your immune system starts going down and you start, you start getting sick and things are starting to pop up that never popped up before because stress could be our worst enemy if we let it and learning how to decrease stress could be actually a very positive, resourceful tool to healing your body. Now, soon there's going to be a book about meditation. I'm, I'm looking through all, <laughs> all your books. Takes a minute to get through these here. Um, uh, you haven't, I don't know that you've written one about meditation yet, but I know that you've talked about it a great deal. Tell us about yes, uh, I, your practices. Well, I, you know, meditation and yoga have been a great resourceful tool for me. And I noticed even my seizures became controlled when I was doing meditation and yoga on a consistent basis. Meditation, you take 10 minutes out of the day. And the best time to do it is in the morning before you start your day. Just 10 minutes is all you need. Go into a quiet, peaceful area of your home or, you know, even go outside. If you have a nice little deck or a backyard and a little area, you can sit down or even bring a little towel with you on, on your grass. If that place makes you feel calm and makes you feel peace, at peace, you know, and take 10 minutes to, to stretch and to breathe and to do certain twists and poses and to, and to, to, and to stop yourself and clear your mind and to clear your, your body and to start focusing and just, and just relax. And a lot of times when you do meditation, you're able to focus better. You're able to create more energy for your body. And you're also able to learn more about yourself. 
things start to pop up that you didn't even realize because you are clear in all that negative energy. You are clear in all the things that your body doesn't want and you're letting it out. And then you're drawn in the positive energy and you're thinking about all the positive things and you're breathing and you're getting good oxygen into your body. And in that 10 minute period of time, you feel very good. You feel energy. You feel clear in your mind and you can actually start a really resourceful, good day. And even with yoga, yoga is great. Yoga, you know, you don't have to do, you know, people think of yoga and they think of all those crazy poses and they think, oh, I can't do that. I got aches and pains and this and that. But you could just stretch. You I'm know? one like, of those. They have, so yeah. many, they have so many different types of yoga. You could do Zen yoga. Zen yoga is just stretching and twisting. And even like certain twists and certain poses could actually help you with a lot of different conditions. It could help you with digestion. It could help you with different aches and pains and, and be able to be, become more mobile. And, you know, just by doing a couple of light little twists and a couple of leg turns and a couple of body turns, you could you could actually, you know, help to, to make yourself feel better. And, uh, you know, and you increase the circulation in your blood and that increases increases your energy. So yoga and meditation, I, I love them. They go hand in hand and it works great for you in your, your body and in your mind. And I, I am, I'm a big supporter of uh, yoga and meditation because you'll hear anybody who does it, how it's helped them and, and made them a better person and, and how it's uh, actually helped their health. I'll even go one step further if it's okay with you. And that is this, if you find a spot that you are comfortable in and you breathe and you clear your mind and you get rid of all the distractions of what you're going to have to do that day and, and mm-hmm. the, what the kids did and da, 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 and all that other stuff, mm-hmm. clear your mind and then you will start to develop the ability to have thoughts that just come to you and they're not yeah. from you. They're from the the guides on the other side, the people that are there to support you, and they're there to help you. And if you quiet your mind enough, you can actually get some really, really cool sound advice from the other side. Oh, most definitely, because people don't realize we all carry the sixth sense and we all have intuition. And it's just connecting. And you know, you'll get a lot of people, like if you talk to people sometimes, they roll their eyes because they can only see inside the box. They can't see outside the box. Exactly. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, you things happen. Do you ever go into like, you know, like uh, you ever go somewhere and then all of a sudden, you know, you get this intuition like, oh, you know, this isn't a good spot. Maybe you should go home, turn around, or you get like an intuition, you know, do this, you know, oh, or you make a choice and all of a sudden you'll have an intuition. You made a good choice or maybe sometimes you get an intuition saying, no, 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 don't do that. Stick with this, you know, and that's your, that's your guide. That's your, the energy around you from, from the, either this, from the spirits giving you guides you know, because we are, the whole world is, is run off of energy. Everything we feed off of energy, the, the whole world, it, uh, you know, it's all run by energy and we are run by energy and, and, you know, energy is a very powerful thing and you, you draw in good energy, you clear your body, you bring in positive energy and you will get positive energy and you will, things will come to you. Have you ever seen like you, you've read those stories where you have, um, people have donated their, their organs to, um, to people who need them. And then all of a sudden a person gets a heart transplant or a person gets a different transplant. And then all of a sudden they feel different. They're getting different thoughts. They're feeling different. They're liking things that they never liked before. Energy and, 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 and when you, when things happen, it's, 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 the world is connected. We're all connected. And people have to kind of open their eyes and realize you could draw in good energy. And they say, even with meditation and yoga and they talk about, and you talk about spiritualism, you can call in the positive spirit. You can call in the good energy. If you call it in, it will come and you can call out the negative energy and ask for it to leave you and to focus on the positive. And those things will happen. You'll notice that you'll start to feel better. You'll notice things will start to occur, you know, suggestions in your mind, or you'll feel a different way. Because they also do say that the, the, the body is not run by the heart. It's, run, it's not run by the mind, excuse me. It's run by the heart. And, you know, the answers 
you know, all lie in the heart, you know, and if you believe in the seven chakras, you know, your alignment, when your alignment is in, in good, in, uh, is, is, is aligned and you're, you're, and you're focused and you, you know, there's different exercises too for, for you know, when your chakras are all aligned, you, you think and you can react and you can do things better also. So there's a lot to be learned and there's, a, you know, a lot of things in life. You know, if you're open to it, you can learn a lot and, you know, and if you try it out, you can really realize that a lot of this stuff could help you. I've learned in, in, in my existence that some people decide that the, they don't want to pay attention and so they don't. Uh, other people mm-hmm. like like myself, I, I get this all the time. I'll get, I'll get like, no. No, you should not do that. And then if I do it anyway, inevitably something bad happens or it doesn't turn out. <laughs> it doesn't turn out to and then then I have to stop and I go, "Oh. All I had to do was to listen to myself or listen to the the messages that I was getting and I wouldn't have had to deal with this." So, I right. I'm learning as I as I get a little bit longer in the tooth that uh you you really need to listen to yourself, you need to listen to your intuition. It's there for a reason and it's there to protect you. And yes. It's, it's 100%. A, it's it's a it's a it's a great thing. You know, I have to tell you, I am just astounded with you. You are just so cool. I I could by the way, <laughs> That's a, that's a, that's a technical term, by the way. Uh, we're talking with Stacy <laughs> Chilemi, and she's an, an author of twenty books. She is a, an extraordinary human being, and has done some some great things. And by the way, the great things are ahead of you, not behind you. That's true, one hundred percent. And as I'm I'm looking forward to working with you because what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and put a little bit of a, a show together so that you can call in and we'll publicize when that's going to be where you can call in and talk to uh, Stacy about things that are going on in your life and maybe a better way to to be. Now, as an example, I've got some issues in my family that that uh, I'd like to talk to you about if I can in just a moment. Um, sure. two things, my brother, uh, first of all, sadly has stage four lung cancer and, wow. uh, is in, in, and there he's in chemotherapy and, and so forth. It's not really doing very well. And my sister has got an autoimmune problem, um, that her body is attacking itself. Have you ever heard of yes. such a thing? I have. I actually have someone in my family that struggles from that, and it's devastating. Um, you know, you could, you know, it, it attacks your body. You could, you know, lose all the hair on your head and, and in your body, and it starts to really take down the immune system, and, and really it opens you up to a lot of bad things, and it, it takes over, and it's, 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 it's really, um, it's a terrible thing. It really is. Do you have any magic potions? <laughs> I know there's no such thing, but do you have uh, any way that I a- advice I could give her on how she can help herself a little bit? You know, it when when your when your autoimmune system is attacking your own body. You know, I've done actually a lot of research on that, and it's really hard. Um, you know, uh, because your body is attacking itself, and um, you know, there are um, different things like, uh, you know, um, taking zinc is very good for your, your, your immune system and, and vitamin C is very good for your immune system. And, um, you know, but I don't off the top of my head have a exact um, remedy. Um, you know, there are doctors out there that specialize in this and, and they do have different types of, of uh, supplements and things that could try to help. But you know, it's 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 very it's a it's a very uh, grueling uh, condition that is really um, there's not a, a lot out there at the moment. But um, working on your immune system and, and if you you know maybe in our next conversation we can talk more because I actually did research and I found a few things and I actually I, I don't have it off the top of my head because it's been a while. But um, you know, working on your immune system and working on um, you know, trying to strengthen your body, um, you know, can help, but it's, uh, it, the, the condition itself is really, really tough, um, because your body is attacking itself. But, you know, if you want to, we could talk a little bit more in our next conversation, but I don't have anything off the top of my head that I can, I can throw out right now. Well, that's all right, because the doctors don't either. They look at her and go, hmm, that's weird. 
and that's all I get. And it's like, gee whiz, that's I've heard of that. That's kind of a weird thing that you've got there going on. And but we can't, we have no idea where it came from, why it's there, or how to fix it. And yeah, you know, it, they they do have some like you know, there's different alternative methods and supplements and different things like that. But it seems like whatever people with that condition try, it, it doesn't get them very far. You know, um, you know, it's it's always and it's hard to you have to try to figure out the the the, the root cause of why this is happening. But you know, it, it's not that easy to do that. And you know, um, as I've done research on it, it's it's you know, there's not many things that you know that I've seen that has actually helped someone with that condition. But you know, I would you know I, I can definitely pull up the research that I've done, and maybe we can talk about it in further in, in our next conversation. But I, off the top of my head, it's 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 just this condition is, is the autoimmune um, that autoimmune condition is 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 a terrible condition that it just goes after its own body, and uh, you know. But uh, we could definitely look into it further and and see you know, different, different options or even things to make, you know, make it feel a little better and, you know, maybe help a little bit, but it is definitely a, a very, very, very tough condition that affects a lot of people, but, you know, there's not a lot out there right now that people, um, that answers and, 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 and magical methods, unfortunately. Now is, is, uh, fibromyalgia, um, a offshoot of that? Is that kind of the same sort of thing? And because I know fibromyalgia is one that it causes a great deal of pain and doctors really don't know how to cope with it or deal with it for folks. Yeah, um, I, go ahead. I, I don't, I don't personally, I don't know exactly if it's an offshoot of it. Um, I, I don't think so, but I'm not going to, I'm not, don't, you know, count me on that information, but I, I don't, I don't, you know, uh, a lot of people, as they get older, they tend to get fibromyalgia. And, you know, uh, a lot, you know, a lot of people have tried CBD and it actually has helped them, you know, because it, it uh, had um, helped the joint pain. And, you know, cause a lot of people would pick up things and they would drop it and, you know, and they would get the joint pain in their hands, especially. And it, w- it was, you know, it could be very grueling for somebody, especially as um, people get older, they tend to, they tend to, um, you know, develop the condition. But, um, I've known people who have tried CBD and have um, have said that it, it has helped um, because it, it also you know blocks the there's pain receptors in your brain that it blocks those pain receptors and it you know you don't feel as much pain and you know and the joints also tend to be a little bit more mo- mobile and it ha- has helped them. Yeah, <laughs> I have to tell you a funny story real quick. My uh, first of all, we live in Washington or I live in Washington State. And we're one mm-hmm. of the states that has made uh, uh, pot legal. And so you, oh, okay. can, you can go to a dispensary and you can get you know, the CBD without uh, the uh, THC or with it or whatever. And my mother had joint pain and, and she's 89 years old. And her doctor said, well, you know, have you thought about going to get some CBD and some gummy bears or something like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. my, and my mother's like, I'm 89 years old and I'm going to walk into a pot shop. Are you losing your mind? <laughs> A lot of people are doing it now. Um, you know, I just uh, my uh, I just gave my uh, my mother some CBD gummy bears. Uh, it's been helping her uh, follow Malaysia, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it, it just actually, you know, it, it it helps. But you also have to like I have to stress out too is that when you when people are purchasing CBD and they're purchasing you know different things, they have to be very very cautious where they're purchasing it because a lot of people are putting stuff out there nowadays because you don't you know um, it's not FDA approved so you know a lot of people tend to um, you know put things out there and you have to really look at the ingredients and look at the quality and then also you know look what people are saying about it because you know I always say if you look in the back of the ingredients and you can't say all the you don't you look at the some of the ingredients and you can't say all the words then it's probably not good for you you know you want stuff that's pure <laughs> organic exactly. you know and uh, and we have to be careful about the CBD gummy bears too. Is that they were companies that the gummy bear doesn't have the CBD. It's the stuff they sprinkle on top that has the CBD on a lot of them. And you have to make sure because some of them were claiming they have 100% CBD and it wasn't 100% CBD. And you know, so you have to be careful. And even like when you're you know when you're buying stuff, like always look at the um, at the ingredients. You know. 
Oh yeah. And, uh, and, and then, you know, and yoga actually can help also fibromyalgia. It's really good. And, uh, you know, people have had some, uh, really good success with that. And even acupuncture is really good. You know, people have uh, said that it's helped them also. Oh yeah. And there's, there's, uh, also some, uh, acupuncture that you don't even have to use a needle. It's, it's a, no. uh, it's a different, different type. And there are, there are all kinds of modalities that are natural that work with your energy that are designed to help you and, and to, and to, to improve your energy flow and that kind of thing. And with your chakras and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm so pleased that we're having this conversation about energy <laughs> and, and stuff because it's it really is it, you can really impact your life to a great degree if you want to. Now, I wanted I wanted to touch base or touch something because I used to be in the food service business, mm-hmm. and they talked about uh, labeling quite a little bit, and yeah. you have to be extraordinarily careful about oh uh, the yeah. type of labeling that is used. In the packaging, let me give you an example. Uh, you can buy 100% beef patties, and it might not be what you think it is, because it can actually mm-hmm. it can actually be have heart meat in it. It can have internal kidney meat in it. It can have all kinds of other things that that yeah. may not be what you think it is. Or as a, as an example, if you buy Free range chicken. Do you ever go and and think that if you buy free range chicken, you're buying a better brand of chicken? All, oh yeah, the marketing, the way they market, forget about it. Unbelievable. All they do is because they've got these big chicken houses, and uh, all they mm-hmm. have to do to qualify to be free range chicken is to open one of the doors, put a fence on the outside, and let the chickens out and and mill about like ten or fifteen feet outside of the of the yeah. of the of the building and they can call that free range chicken and it's also it's and they also feed it with antibiotics and stuff anyway so it doesn't yeah. matter you have to be very careful about the labeling that you that you look at don't you oh my god yes this could be a whole whole show i once read a book it was called vegan or vegetarian and you know she the author, she talked about how what they do to these animals, and it it made me sick to my stomach. Um, you know, they they um, they could put a hundred chickens in a in a small little room, squash together, and these chickens would their feet would become deformed, and it, because they didn't have any room, they were so squashed together that their feet actually changed in shape. And they put, you know, they put, um, they put all different types of chemicals into the chickens to make them bigger, to make them plumper. They put, um, they put, uh, so, so many, uh, inappropriate ingredients that could be harmful to the human body. Same thing when they make these eggs, there's so many, you, nowadays you'll see young girls get in their period around the age of eight years old. That's crazy. They're changing the hormones. You know the, the and and they, what they do to the cows. You know the one, one cow can get sick and, and and all the cows get sick. They start giving them all antibiotics. Then they're giving us the the um, the dairy food and the cheeses and the milks and the same thing with the chickens. You know um, and uh, you know it, it, that's why you see people their bodies are changing. You see people having all these different types of problems and they're having hormonal problems because they're eating foods that have all these different types of um, ingredients because when food goes into your body, you know, um, it, your body breaks it down. But if your body doesn't know what it is and your body can't break it down, it gets stored. And then over a course of time, it gets stored and it gets you get more and more and more in your body. And then you have all these inappropriate ingredients. And it's, it's hitting the organs in your body. It's changing your organs. It's changing the function of your organs. And then you're starting to get sick and you're starting to get problems. And, you know, and this is where it all begins, you know. And, uh, and with the marketers, forget about it. Oh, my goodness. The marketers, if you really read it, like, you know, it'll, it, um, they really know how to word it so if you read it quickly you're like you know um you you think one thing but it's actually something else like they'll say no added um no added um hormones so no added hormones someone's gonna think oh good it doesn't have any hormones what no that's not what it's saying it has hormones but they didn't add any extra to it and so it's like (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly so these are type of uh, type of ingredients and then like even with um 
you know, they, 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 a lot of food doesn't look the way it actually looks right before it's uh, manufactured. You know, it's, they put, they put dyes in a lot of the food, you know, you know, uh, cheese is supposed to be white, you know, they make it yellow because it, it, it sells more, you know, a lot of the drinks have dyes in it, you know, and those dyes can cause cancer, you know, and over the course of years and years drinking it, you know, everybody's body is differently. Some people, it might not affect them. They might have great, you know, immune system, great body. And then some people are a little more sensitive to their bodies. And over a course of time, you know, they start getting different diseases and conditions. And, uh, you know, you can see a lot of bad things happening. And, and the marketers, you know, even this, when I went to Italy, there were so many foods that we are not allowed to eat. And that in Italy, they, they, they don't allow it to come into the country. And a lot of places in Europe don't allow a lot of the, the foods from America to come into the country because it is not healthy for you. And they don't approve of it. So, you know, we're selling it in, in the United States to different Americans, the American community, but we're not allowed to sell it in other countries because it's so unhealthy. But yet we're still selling it to our people and our people are getting sick and we all have these different conditions. Cancer is up. Autism is up. You know, all these different things. You know, we have one of the highest um, rates of autism. I think it's the United States and the UK. We have one of the highest rates. Why? You know, is it the food that we're giving them? You know? It has to be. Yeah. It has to be something. Right. Now, just so just, you know, Stacey, and this will come out over time, but um, I bet you you have never met a real live chicken salesman before. No, I have not. <laughs> well, you have now. And let, let, oh, really? I worked for a vertically integrated uh, chicken processor, which means that they uh, grow the chicken from the egg. And uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you exactly why we have hormonal problems with, with the chicken that we eat. And that, and that is that uh, um, the way it works is you've got these farmers that they grow the chicken from the hatchling to, to about seven weeks, eight weeks. By the way, first of all, in the 1940s and 50s, it took 16 weeks to grow a chicken to three pounds, which is the harvestable weight. And, and now it takes six and a half. Right. And that's uh, crazy. Yeah. So that's it's it's changed. And 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 the University of Arkansas has got a Tyson division that is the chicken school. Uh, so um, they're and they're learning how to make uh, bigger chicken breasts. And and they can't figure out how to get more wings on a chicken, but they're trying to real hard to do that. <laughs> God. And uh, but but the way it, the way it works is, is that you take all these chicks that, that are just hatched and you take them to this big house they put them in the house they keep them there they feed them there and they have to give them hormones because of the uh of the uh, uh and antibiotics to keep the the flock healthy because if some of the chickens start to die they don't get paid for dead chickens they only get paid for live chickens that leave the house to go to the processing plant. So what they do uh, is they try and keep the chickens healthy by giving them antibiotics and things. Now, they don't tell you that, but that's, that's what they do to keep the chickens alive. And then that's why young girls are and young, young guys are getting facial hair at unbelievable ages and young girls are, are uh, uh, getting their periods and stuff. It's because of what we're feeding ourselves. Yeah. It's terrible. It is terrible. And I get so angry when I think about it. And, you know, um, we, we have a society that we, we know the food industry knows what's going on, but yet they keep doing what they're doing and we're going to end up destroying our society. And it, it's a terrible thing. And, you know, food could be your best medicine, you know, if, if it's, if it's good food, you know, and also, you know, people, you know, a lot of people live on a budget and, you know, organic food is the best food to eat, but then you go into a lot of these places and it's so expensive to buy. So how is a person on a, either a low income or average income or even a little bit above an average income, how are they supposed to consistently buy organic food if it's so expensive? And so as, we even make it harder to be healthy. As, as, and especially if you are the mother of three teenage boys and you're supposed to feed them healthy, but they eat like a horse, you, 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 can, <laughs> you can bankrupt yourself. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes, you could. And so it, it makes it it makes it very difficult. Well, I'm I am looking forward, Stacy, to having a lot of conversations like this. I want to include calls with what we do, and uh, 
I'm really looking forward to uh, hanging out with you because uh, you 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 are a, a really dynamic individual, and I and I love your spirit and I love your positive attitude. By the way, her name is Stacy Chalemi, and you can go to stacychalemi.com, and or you can also go to your other website. TheCompleteHerbalGuide.com. That's the one. <laughs> I didn't, sorry, I didn't write that down, so I was hoping. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so I, I look to look forward to to uh, doing more of this, and it'll be it'll be great fun. By the way, um, this is the part of the show where I want you to have the opportunity to talk to our audience about anything you'd like to, anything that you'd like to share with them at all. You know, I, I'm so glad that I had this moment to um, speak to you, and I just hope, you know, um, that I would be able to help people with um, my own knowledge and experience and even with the things that I've gone through in life. And, you know, I, I you know, it, it's it's not easy getting through things in life. We all go through very hard times, and you know, and, and not every day is a pretty day. But if we give ourselves, you know, uh, a way of thinking that that is a positive way, that is a healthy way, we could get through a lot of things in life, or we could teach ourselves how to get through the the humps in life and and how to keep keep on chugging. And uh, you know, I I hope you know with our future conversations um, that we will be able to actually help many individuals like ourselves and. Um, you know, and if people want to contact me on the Complete Herbal Guide with any questions or if they ha- or even on the StacyChilemi.com, you know, I'll be happy to answer any questions people may have. But, you know, I, I really, you know, I'm looking forward to doing this and I'm so happy that we did meet and that we can maybe work together to help other individuals and, and better the lives of millions. That would be from your mouth to God's ears. That would be a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, because because you know we all want to make it make a positive impact. Well, I take that back. We don't all want to do that, but some of us really do. And um, meeting someone like you is extraordinary for me because uh, um, you're right up you're right up my alley. I I, re, I could sit here and listen to you all day. <laughs> Uh, same here. You know, I, 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 I love talking to you. I think you're a great person and I, I love your, your thoughts and, and your way of thinking as well. You have a great, uh, a great way of looking at the world and you have a lot of great, um, insight as well. And, you know, it's a pleasure speaking with you and I hope that we could really, you know, uh, do a lot of dy- dynamic things together and, uh, and people will actually, you know, learn a lot from both our experiences and and knowledge in life. Boy, because I've got some. <laughs> I have, <laughs> wait, the, the the regular audience knows knows uh, about my some of my past, but it's been it's been quite a quite a journey. But uh, talking with someone like you, see what really astounds me, and what really makes my heart sing is to find somebody who is not only a positive person, but has gone through some issues in her life and is now come out the other side. Do the issues continue? Yes, uh, but they mm-hmm. continue for all of us. But you come out the other side and you have made the conscious decision that if you can help one person, you can help a million. You know, I, I truly believe that in my heart and in my soul, you know, um, the first time I was able to help somebody, you know, made a huge impact and it made me feel so good about myself. And, you know, and I learn from others every day when I speak to different people and I feel their energy and I feel, you know, I can, I can relate to a lot of these people. I just, you know, I learn every day, you know, every day is a new day and I learn something great every day. And it's a pleasure speaking with different people and meeting different people because so many people have gone through so many different things in life. And if we could just feed off of each other and learn from each other and help each other, imagine how great the world can be. And hopefully we don't need, you know, terrible things to, to bring us together because it seems like everybody moves, moves forward and helps each other the most when there is a terrible thing going on in life. 
but we should be like this every day. We shouldn't have to wait for a pandemic or we shouldn't have to wait for, you know, something bad to happen. We should be, we should be willing to want to help each other every day and people should work together. And, and that's how the world becomes strong. That's how the world has become great is by everybody, you know, taking the time to, you know, give back to each other. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And if, for somebody that, that has done, I've been doing radio in one form or another since like 2002, 2003. And to, for mm-hmm. our audience, let me explain what it's kind of like to be doing a talk show or to do, be doing a podcast. Like today, I'm in my, in my home talking to you. You're on the other side of the country. And it's kind of a, a, a solo existence. Well, when I was doing a show called Positive Talk Radio on KKNW, which, by the way, you're going to be on next month on KKNW, 11.50 a.m., and then, and the, which will be great fun. And uh, I was doing this talk show two hours a day, five days a week called Positive Talk, and I ran out of resources, which would be money to you and I. And so I had to terminate the broadcast. And on the last day that I did the show, I had a lady, I, I, first of all, when I announced that the show was going off the air, I had no idea how many fans the show actually had because the phone lines filled up and everybody was uh, angry and crying that, that the show was going off the air and stuff. And, and one lady get, gets on and she says, I just have to tell you, my, I'm a caregiver for an Alzheimer's, tagent, t- Alzheimer's patient on Bainbridge, Bainbridge Island. We listen to you every day. You're the only one that can get through to her whenever you laugh, whenever you, and it's like, I had no earthly idea that I was actually helping anybody, but as it turns out, I was. And so from that point on, I've dedicated myself to providing the type of radio show or podcast or whatever it is that I do. I want to do it in a positive way and bring people like you because people need to hear more of what you have to say. And I'm so glad to be part of that. Thank you. I I can't say you know this is it, it, speaking with you has been a, a wonderful um a wonderful time. I just you know your energy as well it just lights up a room uh you know and uh, you know it, it's wonderful when we can help each other and help others and I just look forward to you know working together to, to help other people. And I even, from, from a lot of my writings, you know, people, you know, I remember even I used to do a inspirational poetry and, and I used to write poetry and post it every day. And, and I would try to, I wrote a couple of poetry books just to, to give people motivation. And one day I just, uh, you know, I, I, I just, life got very busy and I, I, I stopped writing those poems. And people were writing to me and they, they were like, you know, I look forward to it. every morning. I would, I would get my cup of coffee and turn on the computer so I could hear your next poem. And oh, wow. I, you don't really realize what, you know, how you impact people until, you know, unfortunately something gets taken away and then everybody, you know, people come out and say, Hey, wait, stop, you know? And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how, how so many people can affect other people who buy, you know, how, you, you know, just a, a, a few, few words or even, you know, just, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the things you have to say, how it, how it can motivate and inspire and change other people's lives. It's amazing. You it, know, it, it truly is. It, it, you no, know, you're, you're absolutely right. One of the things that, uh, uh, in between when I was doing radio back in 2003 and now I've been a uh, city bus driver for 11 years. And one of the, yes, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, driving around the city of Seattle in a, in a 60 foot bus with people getting on and off one of those kind of bus drivers. And, uh, mm-hmm. what I've discovered, well, what I tried to do was to be positive to everyone who came on the bus, say hello, maybe smile, maybe <laughs> depending on how they were presenting themselves and, and trying mm-hmm. to do some really cool things. And what I discovered was. And this is something that every one of us can do if we choose to. And that is when you smile at somebody, not, not that you can smile with a mask on necessarily, but, but you can at least have a, a smile in your voice. Um, if you smile at somebody and say something nice to them or just hi, just how are you, you may be the only person that talks to that person all day long. 
And if you can create a positive moment for them, that can be something that can help them and you and help the planet because I believe that if we all work together, we can raise the vibration and the energy level of the planet so that we can get through some of this crap that we're going through. Yes, 100%. And so I'm looking forward to it. Stacy is going to be with us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna get tired of listening to me. Um, so, <laughs> Stacy Chalemi has been our guest, and uh, I hope that you will go to her website, StacyChalemi.com. You can do everything else from that you need to from there. Uh, find out. Uh, she's by the way, she's a very nice looking lady. You and you as a kid, you I feel so sorry for your dad. You were an adorable teenager. <laughs> To watch well, you, thank you so much. <laughs> to watch you go through all of that, oh, it was it was just awful. So again, we we've, we've been talking with Stacy Chalemi. She's going to be a regular on the on the show until uh, she throws me out the window. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to hope that we can do some fun <laughs> stuff together. We're going to invite your calls. Um, so you're going to be hopefully everywhere. We're going to put you on YouTube. We're going to, we're going to uh, put this on my, my website, obviously, and, and, uh, Stacy's website. So, and we'll let you know when we will be live so that you can call in with questions for Stacy. So, uh, with that, um, Stacy, any, any, any further last comments, not the, you already made last comments, but you want to try again? <laughs> Well, you know what? I, like I said, you know, if people um, want to get in touch with me, I'm always around. So if you'd like to go to the completeherbalguide.com, feel free to, to uh, go there and, and hit me on the comment page or the contact page and, you know, leave me a question or, you know, anything that you have. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And, um, you know, uh, you know, my website, um, we always have, we try to cover as much stuff as possible to help people improve their lives. But, you know, if people see things and they want it, they maybe they're um, missing something or they feel like, you know, they, they have a question, but they just don't know the answer to it, you know, hit us with the question and, you know, we'll do our very best to answer it and, and help you in any possible way. And even with videos, you know, if you have a question and, you know, you'd like me to answer it, if it's a, if it's a question that can, you know, a valuable question i'd be happy to you know create a video and answer the question you know to help you um we have a, a great um so complete herbal guide uh youtube station and uh you know i've been wanting to like work with people if they have questions and i and i actually know the answer and if i could help you um i'd be happy to create a video just to you know give you the answer and and to help you through your courses in life that's awesome. So thank you again for being here and you're going to be here on a regular basis. So, uh, with that, uh, you've been listening to my independence report. Do something nice for yourself. Do something nice for somebody else. We'll see you next time. Hey, and thanks for listening to this episode all the way to the end. Hey, pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to follow us so you can receive regular updates and new posts. And remember, take care of each other because each other's all we've got. See you next time. A mind dependence report.